you, I prefer not to gamble. Okay. So for those who have crystal ball, go with your suggestion. For those who don't, go with mine. Hey everyone, this is Nazar Akio from Max Pro. Hi, I'm Linda. And I'm Paul. And we're Love and Pebbles. Hi, this is Lopa Vandermersch from Rasa. Oh, you're listening to, and you're listening, and you are listening to, to the e Show. Show. Welcome to the Ecom Show, presented by Blue Tusker, the number one place to hear the inside scoop from other e-commerce experts, where they share their secrets on how they scaled their business and are now living the dream. Now, here is your host, Andrew Math. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Ecom Show. I am your host, Andrew Math, and today I am joined by the amazing Yaron Shapiro. Shiran, how you doing? You ready for a good show? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so so how much. I'm super happy to uh, be here today with you. Yeah, super excited to have you on the show. Um, so I always like to kind of start these off the stereotypical way, which is basically why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you started, and then obviously about Eight Fig, and we'll kind of go from there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I know this is an uh, e-commerce show, right? And I'm. <laughs> I'm, I'm not an e-commerce seller, but I'm uh, coming from a commerce uh, company. Um, my, my family deal with uh, commerce uh, through all of our lives. In, uh, um, but me, myself, I'm coming from engineering uh, background. I learned computer science. Uh, I develop code uh, through all of my career. This is where I'm coming from. So I... Um, I, I worked in multiple tech companies, including Mercury that was acquired by HP. I was part of the founding team at a company called Check, where we were the first uh, mobile bill payments application. Uh, actually, enabled consumers to pay their bills from directly from their phones. Today, it sounds like a normal thing, right? To pay, yeah. <laughs> pay through your, through your phone doesn't doesn't sound like a big thing. But when we did that, we were app number five hundred. On the app store okay so the the first 500 applications she did so, well <laughs> so, so back then to make payments from your from your phone was like a science fiction okay uh, it, it ran very nicely until it was acquired by uh, intuit um, um, that we are all familiar with then i was co-founder and cto at a company called the culture trip um, a big a big brand, a big website. Uh, I'm sure many of the uh, viewers are familiar with writing a lot, co- a lot of content um, that people usually love. Um, and then uh, I co-founded and I was CEO at a company called Clarium, where we uh, created technology to underwrite the risks in supply chain. And then we start. We we this company was acquired late 2019, and then we started Eight Fix. So to summarize that, I'm coming from engineering background, with a lot of knowledge in payments, a lot of knowledge in supply chain, a lot of uh, family uh, experience in commerce, and we decided to take all of that in order to uh, help what I think is a revolution in commerce, and. I think that usage of smart payments and technology and especially supply chain can technology can really help the e-commerce sellers who are the new entrepreneurs who are actually doing the real and new uh, commerce era. So mm-hmm. uh, the, uh, I, I'm really excited to be to be here to talk about e-commerce. Beautiful. So you're you're in a space that there's definitely a bunch of lenders out there, right? Like that's, that's kind of the, there's a bunch, it's, it's not complicated to find any of them, but there's, there's obviously some differentiators that everyone kind of points at. Um, and I know Shopify does something themselves. I believe Amazon does something themselves too, if I'm not mistaken, but what's the, what is the differentiator between eight fig and everyone else that, you know, we won't say names. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, there is there are a lot of differences. I actually do not want to to be in this show and try like to to preach. Uh, hey, you should all use Eightfig, but hey, yeah. you, 
you should all, you should all use eight figures. <laughs> but you should. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should. But I, I, I want to ask you, maybe I can take a, this question to a little bit different level to okay. think about e-commerce and what are the challenges that they are facing. Because I think that the challenges that they are facing were getting capital, getting funds is one of these challenges. But I think that most of the viewers will think similar to me that this is not the only uh, challenge that they are that they are facing. Let's let's try to think about about them. Okay, they are usually people who are uh, doing what they are passionate about. They are doing things that they know a lot about. Um, so they are selling uh, goods that they uh, develop in a very good, uh, in good quality, uh, right pricing. So very, very nicely. And their their profits are are good profits. Okay, they are making good profits out of that. Their their business is usually a solid one. So very profitable. Another thing that these e-commerce sellers have, and this is what excites me, is uh, that they are super scalable, right? So uh, they are selling on, on Amazon.com, they are selling on Shopify, on BigCommerce, on WooCommerce, on Walmart. There are a lot of, of options. I'm sorry if I missed, any, if I missed anyone. <laughs> There's but, a lot of them. Uh, exactly, there are a lot. <clears throat> the, thing, the nice thing is that they are able to scale like significantly. Almost, I must, I might say, infinitely. So, very profitable and super scalable. So, all, all, all is good, right? The thing is that once they start to grow, the challenges start to come in. They they rely on supply chain many times on international supply chain. Now, mm-hmm. if you are ordering one batch uh, from another country, let's say China. Let's take that take this for uh, as an example. It might take you a few months to get the goods. This is the lead time, and then some logistics time, and then some some time until you are making the the the, the marketing and getting things out, and you are getting paid. This is a process. Now, if you are small, you are doing this process again and again and again, and it's fine. Once you start growing, you start being successful. It start being very tense. Because the frequency of orders is increasing. The amounts that you need to pay for deposit, for balance, for shipping, it starts to accumulate. It starts to be significant amounts. And you might start to have multiple products. You might even have multiple platforms that you are running on. This is the place that these very profitable businesses that they are passionate about and super scalable this is where it starts to become complex. So getting funds is one of the solutions uh, to the challenge that they have. But another thing is about planning, being able to create their business plan, plan their cash flow, and adjust the cash flow and adjust the business plan as they go. Because they might make a, make a plan. Every e-commerce seller knows that the plan that he did last month <laughs> <laughs> probably yeah. change to the better <laughs> or the worse, and and it's fine. You just need to adjust. And so I think e-commerce sellers, as they are small businesses, they need ability to make planning. They need ability to get a capital, which is tailored to this ever-changing planning. I think this is the key. So. With that, I mean, that definitely makes a lot of sense. But obviously now going into 2023, we're looking at probably, you know, some people speculate whether this is true or not, but we're looking at probably going into a recession in many different countries, which would be where their supply chain starts, where it ends. What's your thought process on taking in additional capital during a recession when really it's kind of a big question mark of are they going to continue to see the sales that, you know, they were projecting, are they going to see a significant decrease? Is it just kind of, kind of be like a flat year? Like how are you supposed to kind of make that judgment on when you should be bringing in additional capital or not? It's a great question. I will answer your question, but if you want later, I will give you my um, assessment or prediction 
or guess on, on what I think is going to happen. But to answer your, your question, I think this is a very hard question. I do not have an answer. I can just say that I do not know. The, the thing is that all of the e-commerce sellers who are currently listening to us, they do not know either, right? They didn't know if, let's take Amazon sales, if, if Prime Day on July was going to be a success or not. Eventually it was, but it was very hard to anticipate that. Everyone talked about recession. Uh, 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 Prime Day was awesome. What does it say about the holiday season? I don't know. So far, it seems quite nice, but it was hard to predict. Do you know what is going to happen in Q1? I don't know. Q2, I, I do not know. <laughs> so what I do know is that once you are living in uncertainty, what you need is you need flexibility. So if you are committing now to take a loan or advance of $100,000, $500,000, $1 million, okay? Depends on the size of your of your business, right? It, it might be frightening. I totally get it. This is why um, the right way to do that is to make plans and to make sure that the cash that you are getting, the loans or advances that you are getting are going together with the plan. Because then if your plan will go, is, will go worse, than what you expected. So you update the plan down, you are getting less cash, which is awesome for you. You are not committing for too much. If you are doing better, maybe you were too pass pessimistic. And actually you are doing awesome, right? It's just, mm -hmm. it's, let's be positive. It's also, it's also an, a, a, an option. Then you are going, you will need to update your plan up and the cash will go up with you. So getting flexible cash that goes with the business plan that you are doing that you can always change i think is is a, is a significant key so let, let's pivot back to what you mentioned what do you think is going to happen i think i do not know how recession is going to influence consumers uh, consumption right mm -hmm. but let's take the war side let's say that uh, consumers will buy less Less and for cheaper, okay? This is the worst commerce case, right? My thinking is that unlike any similar era, similar uh, crisis in the past, e-commerce today is so established that I think that e-commerce sellers are actually in a better position to overcome recession than brick and mortar stores. Brick and mortar uh, stores, they have a lot of fixed commitments and liabilities. They have rent, they have a lot of employees, they have, they have, they have a lot of com commitments, so they are less agile. E-commerce sellers, if you think about that, almost everything is flexible, almost everything is agile. So I do not know what is going to happen, but I know that e-commerce sellers are, can adjust quicker. I think that this is what Eightfig is helping them as well through the making a business plan and, and cash flow goes goes with it, very flexible. So e-commerce sellers, I think, are in a better position to adjust to whatever the future in the, in 2023 is putting ahead of us. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> if you think about that, though, so let's look at like the brick and mortar side. Yeah, they have a lot of other people on staff. Um, you know, they have rent, they have things like that they still have to pay for. But a majority of e-commerce sellers, at least a lot of the ones I'm familiar with, are typically using like 3PLs. And, you know, they have, while they're not dealing with the headaches of management and, you know, staff and all that fun stuff, they still have that giant chunk of what they're paying for their 3PL. So if they do see kind of, you know, diminished returns, they start to see a big reduction in revenue coming in don't they start kind of running that risk of like, I can't afford this 3PL anymore, or maybe like, you know, their manufacturer, it's just like, I can't order enough quantities for it to stay at a certain level, in which case now your margins get lower. Like, how do you kind of combat that? Yeah. So I, my, my recommendation uh, for e-commerce sellers, it might be a little bit counterintuitive, but I might say that they need to start working in, smaller and shorter cycles or batches. Mm -hmm. So if they used to buy 
Um, I'm just giving an example. To buy inventory for a quarter, once a quarter, maybe they should go to do it twice per quarter. So half the inventory, but making it faster. Maybe even, for example, if they do it international, instead of shipping by sea, consider shipping by air. So you are going to pay more probably on, in, on, the, on, the, on the goods because your chunks are smaller. You might pay more on shipping if you do it by air or expedite or whatever is relevant to your business. So your expenses will go up. Your agility will go up as well. Mm-hmm. And your commitment to your 3PL, for example, can be a little bit more mitigated. So it's a little bit counterintuitive, but if you think about that, um, I think that this can be uh, very good for them. So shorter cycles and batches. A plan ahead, but we, we talked about this already. And maybe the last advice that I might suggest is um, try to create your own traffic. Try to create your own audience. And the best way that I know about this is you should create your own content. Uh, and it's relevant for every industry that you are in. All right? yeah. Create your, it can be uh, through video, this can be through written content, create your website. It's, it might be a challenge for, for some uh, of the uh, sellers. We are, we are helping them with doing that because it, it, if I explain my uh, experience earlier, like um, we have a lot of experience in content creation in scale over here in, uh, inside 8Fix, so we are helping clients. Uh, but I will recommend going on that direction. Yeah. It can make you independent, not reliable on platforms. Um, and if you if you own your inventory and its space due to shorter c- cycles, and you control your uh, 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 income flow of consumers, you might be much, much stronger. <laughs> Just so our listeners know, I did not pay you to say that you should create more content, but I appreciate you saying that. <laughs> um, well, so obviously that obviously means I've been in the e-commerce marketing side of things for, I think coming up on like 15 years now, but mm-hmm. the operation side wildly infuriates me. I don't entirely get it. And it's why I was never a seller myself is because that's the side that I just, I don't have any trust in myself for it. So uh, forgive me if this is a dumb question, but why couldn't you go in the other direction? So you just had what was, seems to be like a tolerable Q4 as opposed to what a lot of people were expecting. Why not do a significantly larger order so that instead of maybe doing quarterly, maybe now you're maybe you're a little bit less agile, but you might've been able to do a bigger run and even get your margins a little bit better. In which case, what are the pros and cons of if they were to actually take in additional capital, if they need it, or even if they had a good enough Q4, to do yeah. a larger order and just be have inventory for a, a significantly longer time. Uh, I told you that I'm coming from a family of uh, a commerce, right? This is in mm-hmm. our uh, DNA for a few generations. So I will tell you something from my uh, from my father. Okay, uh, I I'm not I'm not a gambler. I'm not gambling. Like what you suggested can be awesome, right? If it works. You, you are, this is the best solution, obviously. Uh, so if you have a crystal ball that can tell you that this is going to work for you, go ahead, do that. If you do not have a crystal ball, and by the way, I do not have one, Me either. then <laughs> what I will suggest to do is to increase your probability of survival and success. So going into shorter uh, uh, batches might be a little bit more expensive. I get it. Agility is going to save your business. Eventually, in the mid-range, in the mid-term, it's going also to pay you off in profits. You might find that you can make small changes and maybe price it for more. For example... You see that the mood of consumers is shifting a little bit. They are still Mm -hmm. buying your product, but they want it a little bit different. A lot of things 
that especially when, um, if consumers' consumptions will go down and maybe they are going, might be more picky, you, I prefer not to gamble, okay? Um, so one. for Touché. those who have crystal ball, <laughs> go with your suggestion. For those who don't, <laughs> go with mine. That's exactly why I don't do operations. Um, so the other thing I was thinking about too, I've, I've always heard that you don't really want to take a loan or any kind of capital injection unless you don't need it. If you need it and you're like kind of desperate for it, it's probably not the right time to do that, even right. though your answer might be biased, but super interested in what your thoughts are. Like, what, how do you stand on that? Uh, I do not see what we are doing as injecting capital. It, this is yeah. th we are we are doing that, right? We are giving we are giving capital to uh, our partners, uh, to our uh, to the e-commerce sellers who are working with us. And uh, if any one of you is listening to us, so thank you. We we really we really appreciate your business. And I, I see it a little bit different. We see ourselves as the AI CFO that these businesses do not have. They might use an external accountant to, to, do, to do the reporting and stuff, and mm -hmm. which, which is awesome. But CFO job is a little bit different. CFO is doing your planning, is giving you warnings about what you should do, you should not do. He's, he might see things before, before you see because he analyzed the data in a little bit different way than then you as the businessman is looking at that. They are looking for, the CFO is looking from a different angle. And the good CFO also provide the cash. He's talking with the banks, he's bringing in, in the cash. And, and he's tracking your execution versus the plan. And if there is a gap between the plan is like that, the execution is like that, or the execution is better than the plan, he will make adjustments. This is what a good CFO would have done for you if you had one. Uh, but many uh, e-commerce sellers do not have one. Uh, so 8Fig is their AI CFO. And I think this is the offer that we are giving them. So I do not see the money that we give clients as a loan or as an advance or as a capital injection. We are actually their partners. We give them money, not in general. We give them money to buy this batch of goods according to the plan. And then they need more to buy more goods because they, let's say the sales in, in the holiday season comes up to be awesome. So they need to order another batch, no problem. They come into the app and say, hey, I need more. They create a new line. This is our term. So they create a new line. Boom, they get more funds because it just makes sense. This is a good business decision to go and get more goods. Okay. Let me give you a negative example as well. They ordered a lot of goods for the holiday season. They also plan to order some more goods in Q1. Holiday season is not that great. They are stuck with some inventory. The good business decision, which is good for the client, will be, okay, no problem. Let's take more time to sell this inventory. That's it. My sales space goes down. What can I do? But maybe it's time to postpone in a month or two the next batch, right? This is the right business decision. This is exactly when I'm saying when I'm talking about updating the business plan. This is exactly what I'm talking about. So this is what Eightfig is doing for them. So it's more a partnership than a lender. If you're looking for a lender, as you said, there are tons of options. Yeah. Uh, which we will not name them. But if you are <laughs> if you are uh, looking for a partner for an AI CFO, um, I think we might be helpful. Beautiful, Iran. Really appreciate having you on the show. Uh, obviously, love to give you a moment here. Let everyone know where they can find out more about you and more about Eight Fig. Yeah. So of course, you the best way is to come to uh, our website, Eightfig uh, .co. Uh, you can also find us on uh, most of uh, uh, social networks. You can find me. Uh, you can text me directly on uh, LinkedIn. Um, but you can find us also on uh, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, um, Twitter. I hope that I did not insult any uh, social media. But <laughs> if you have another social media, we are over there as well. 
please come in. Uh, you can come into the website. There is a button to text with us. You are welcome to text with us. Uh, feel free to text me directly. Um, and thank you so much for uh, having me today. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show. For all of our listeners, I'll put this in the show notes. It's 8FIG, uh, it, it, the number 8, not spelled out. Um, so just in case you go finding it, you don't have to do all that work of spelling it out. Um, but obviously, really appreciated having everyone on the show. Uh, per usual, please make sure you rate, review, subscribe, all that fun stuff on whichever platform you're watching this on, which could be any podcast platform you prefer or YouTube or head over to ecomshow.com to see all of our previous episodes and all that fun stuff. But usual, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you all next time. How are we going? Thank you for tuning in to the Ecom Show. Head over to ecomshow.com to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform or on the Blue Tusker YouTube channel. The Ecom Show is brought to you by Blue Tusker, a full service digital marketing company specifically for e commerce sellers looking to accelerate their growth. Go to bluetusker.com now for more information. Make sure to tune in next week for another amazing episode of the Ecom Show.